welcome to another episode of PLA with myself and uh, Nick. And we've got today a special guest uh, by the name of Bruce Barclayson, who is uh, a head attorney and notary in, at, with us here at BSA. Uh, thank you, Bruce, for joining us today and uh, holding it in for Bruno. Thank you very um, much for having me and greetings to all the viewers. 100% there you go. Uh, we've got two questions today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, both of them do come from our real estate agents that we do work uh, quite in, in detail with. And then Nick will take the first one and then Bruce the second one. And then obviously, of course, um, both gentlemen are welcome to just um, chip in um, whenever necessary. Um, the first one, um, Nick, is uh, basically from one of our estate agents, as I said. And they state that tenants view the property and they signed the contract. And they obviously did the ingrain inspection as well. And there are two walls that have some damp, right? And they think that it's because of a pipe uh, that's on the bath, right? Um, but the landlord um, said he's not going to fix, um, he's not going to fix it immediately. Uh, and the tenant said that the damp is a health risk and they actually did not move in, right? But they did put some of their stuff in the property, right? The landlord just then said to them, if they want their money off the rent, they can cancel the lease and move on. So the question is, um, what should they do in this um, situation? The lease is in place, but they haven't taken occupation. Um, is the landlord attached to the rent? Um, is there going to be a need to cancel the lease all over again? Gentlemen? Okay, so so it's fairly it, it's a fairly straight um, forward situation. Um, and I, I think what, what seems to be the cloudy situation here is because the lease agreement has literally just started um that seems to be why they they you know someone might get confused about the situation because the tenant is part way moving in they're not fully in um you know in the premises from the question but notwithstanding the fact that they're not haven't fully moved in everything into the particular premises that itself does not have any bearing on the actual contract that has been entered into between the parties okay so the lease agreement itself, and that's just the agreement between the parties for the lease of this particular property, is already concluded at this point, as far as I can see. Okay, um, you know, there, there's a signed lease. The keys, uh, uh, by means of possession of the property, have been handed over to the tenants, and the tenants were in the process of moving into the property. And I think at the start of the question, it said the tenants inspected the property, so they've entered into this particular agreement. They have subsequently found a a, a defect on the property. OK, um, in the circumstances, you know, what where people might get confused on something like this is because the lease agreement is at such an infant stage. Can the tenant just go, oh, no, I now see a defect and I want out of the contract without penalty. And unfortunately, that's not how it works in our law. The contract is concluded between the parties. It is binding. Um, so in the circumstances. If there is a defect in terms of the lease agreement that's concluded between the parties, then the tenant has to act appropriately and demand a proper performance. Or, um, you know, depending on the lease agreement that's concluded between the parties um, and, and the Rental Housing Act, obviously, there might be a, a period of time where they can notify the landlord and the landlord may have obligations in terms of the lease agreement to actually remedy within a time period or may not, um, depending on what the parties have agreed to. But I'm not going to go into particular lease agreements, obviously, it will depend on what agreement the parties have concluded. But certainly for the purposes of this question, the tenants cannot simply, upon moving in, sit down and go, oh, well, I see a defect that I didn't notice at the time that I inspect the property. And now I want to walk away and not have any obligations in terms of the agreement. That simply doesn't work at all. The tenants will have to at the very least, demand performance, demand that this defect is remedied if there is an obligation on the landlord. Or alternatively, remember, our tenants in terms of the provisions of uh, Section 14 of the Rental Housing Act can um, cancel a lease agreement at any time with 20 business days notice subject to a reasonable cancellation penalty. So the tenants could in, in, uh, in the circumstances also do that if they so choose, but certainly uh, they wouldn't be able to walk away without paying anything and and in particular uh the first month's rent um for for that particular property if you know that property has been handed over to to the tenants for their use um so yeah um the landlord's position although he stated it quite bluntly in the in the uh in the question 
the landlord's position is in fact correct. The tenants can cancel, um, but certainly they're not going to get a reduction from rental uh, as a result of this. They will most likely be liable for a reasonable cancellation penalty in terms of the Rental Housing Act. Awesome, awesome. Uh, th thanks, Nick. And Bruce, um, because we have you here, of course, I, I must make um, as much use of you as possible. Uh, I'll, I'll take advantage and perhaps you can just maybe just quickly add a word to, to that question before we move on to the second one. I actually agree with what Nick has actually mentioned, and that is the uh, position. The Consumer Protection Act absolutely affords the landlord the right to claim a reasonable cancellation penalty. The tenant won't be able to avoid that in consequence. And in fact, the landlord may even claim and assert that the tenant's actually in breach of the lease agreement by refusing to take occupation. Most lease agreements have a term to the effect that you may not depart with occupation, say for otherwise it's provided for in the lease agreement. Mm -hmm. And But I do want to focus in on the landlord's obligations, and especially in the unfair practices regulations of Gauteng in particular, that it is the landlord's obligation to maintain the plumbing and sanitation system, um, installations. It does not speak of mold and many says that the systems must be in a work in good working order. So as for the mold, if that is a health risk, obviously the tenants would have to avert and approve that. I do imagine that would be rather difficult. And hence the landlord would be in a better position from in terms of power should litigation ensue. 100%. Well, there you have it. They have it uh, um, to our viewers. Uh, th thank you, gentlemen, for, 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 for fully covering that question. Um, once again, contracts do become binding um, once you sign them, if, of course, they're lawful and you one cannot just walk away um, just because they feel like they're just not happy and they don't want to be part of it anymore. Uh, there they, will always be um, consequences to that. So do read the contracts, um, do understand your obligations, your rights and responsibilities, and look of way to obviously um, amicably remedy those. And, and then we are now going to...